So good evening. It's great to be here, and um, um, I'm going to take you on a short trip about a topic in science that really requires interdisciplinarity. But yeah, we start even with a with a rock ca carving. Um, this is this has been made maybe 20,000 years ago in this magnificent valley called the Coa Valley in Portugal, and it's an ibex that is drawn here. And so our ancestors that were hunter, hunters and uh, recollectors, they were already fascinated by biodiversity. Now, myself, you know, one of the things that took me into this path was listening to this uh, story on the Oh, this is not working for me. Okay, I have to go here. Mm. I use the keyboard. So, this story of the um, uh, of the redwood um, kid, and uh, we call it Capuchin Vermelho in Portuguese. Yeah, somehow close to to German. Yeah, hot caption. On and. Um, in this story, you know, you all know about the story. Something intrigued me really was that, you know, it, it speaks about the wolf. And my grandmother, that used to tell me this story, you know, she told me that there were no wolves around. So I, I don't understand how, how this story came about. You know, how, how did this story came about of the wolf that attacks these kids? So I, I've been intrigued about that, you know? I've been intrigued about where did the biodiversity go? Where did all the species go? H how did that happen? And, you know, can we bring in them back? Can we bring these species that are, were extinct back? And so, it, this one works? <laughs> okay. One of the first things that we were doing were hunting this biodiversity, yeah? hunting, and not only using hunting, but fire. So this was one of the first things that humans were doing, and driving this huge megafauna extinction, and um, starting around in Europe, around 30,000, 20,000 years ago. But the other thing we did, starting even later, was converting the landscapes into agricultural landscapes, these forest landscapes. So this, for instance, is research that, you know, you need to combine archaeologists, you need to combine paleoecologists, um, you need to combine uh, agricultural scientists to understand how humans were modifying historically these landscapes. And this is a reconstruction from a colleague of mine, Yad Kaplan, uh, of forest over time. And as you see, um, around 3,000 years ago, there was a lot of forest in Europe, and much of it was gone by um, the beginning of the Roman Empire already, and by the beginning of the Industrial Age, it was an agricultural landscape in Europe. Now, this was not only what happened, of course, there were these major extinctions, and some of them happened really relatively recent. So yes, the mammoths went down uh, uh, 20,000 years ago in Europe, but species like the bear and the bison were still around. Well, bison really never went extinct, or the bear never went extinct. Um, but in, even in Germany, the bear was around 200 years ago. The um, auroch, the ancestor of the cattle, were around 500 years ago in Europe. And the tarpar, also 300 years ago, 400 years ago, they were around still in Europe. These are recent extinctions. And uh, so this was really caused by a combination of hunting, habitat conversion, and other changes we have been made in, making to uh, ecosystems. Now, the question is, is there a possibility of bringing some of this back? Can we make more space for nature? And so I and a colleague here, um, that is also tonight here, Leticia Navarro, 
have been working on this idea of rewilding. How can you go about rewilding European landscapes? And the reason why we think this is a good time for rewilding is because there is a lot of farmland abundance, a lot of reduction of pressure on landscapes in Europe, in many regions in Europe. This is a picture, again, this is something that you work with uh, uh, historians uh, to understand how were historical landscapes when we start having documents, written documents, descriptions. Here we even have photographies of um, an area in the Italian Alps. And what I want to look at, you to look at is the forest area here. There was no forest except for a small area on, already close to the timber line in the Alps. And here you have the town, and what you have is a huge grazing area. Think about this landscape as a, a landscape with, with thousands of, sh of sheep um, grazing this area. Now, this is around 1903, and, uh, um, and you, start, you start seeing um, already more forest, and this is current time. This is not correct. Um, this is current time, and this is a lot of forest came back. Now, what is happening here in the Italian Alps is happening in many mountain regions in Europe. There is a lot of forest coming back, but not only in mountain regions, and not only about agriculture. You know, we finally found a good use for military bases, yeah? So we can now use abandoned military bases also for rewilding. There is a, over half a million hectares of bases that are not needed anymore in, in Germany, and many of them are really kind of wildlife hotspots. And um, over the next um, 20, 30 years, an area maybe twice the size of the Netherlands will become available through decreased land use pressure to farmland abundance across Europe. Now, the wolf is starting to come back. In Germany, it's one of the places where um, uh, we, we had a, a huge um, expansion of the wolf. We are having a huge expansion of the wolf over the last 20 years. But many other species are starting to come back through this decrease of the pressure in landscapes. What, what is happening is that we are hunting less in some regions. We are having less pressure in the landscape, and things are getting better. So there is a bit of good news, and there is a bit of hope here. And this is such a wonderful story of how you know, we can sometimes make things go better in terms of biodiversity. Now, the question is, is do people want this biodiversity back? And uh, the evidence is not uh, clear here. And the, again, here you have to work with uh, social scientists um, to understand what are the perceptions about biodiversity um, in Europe and about the return of this wildlife. And um, the first bear to come back in Germ to Germany 200 years after the last bear went extinct got um, a, sh a shooting order from the government uh, of Germany. And yeah, that was a nice welcome, you know. I hope they don't do this uh, tonight after the Brexit, if there is a Brexit, I hope not, that you'll have shooting orders for any immigrants crossing the, um, the channel. But um, yeah, that's what happened to Bruno. Bruno was his name. And, uh, you know, the wolf is raising a lot of, of fears and uh, how wolves break into um, enclosures and, and kill um, 13 much-loved uh, pet deer and so on. Um, so even last month, there was some, uh, there is now a lawsuit against um, an NGO that released this bison um, in West Germany. And so why is this resistance against the return of wildlife? Why there is some uh, concern in the public opinion? And why are we not welco welcoming back uh, nature? And this is really another interesting area of research. 
how do you make the coexistence between biodiversity and humans possible? What kind of tools do you have? And you can work with, for instance, economists. We, 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 there is a foundation uh, called the... Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I cannot get this right. There is a foundation called Rewilding Europe that is doing... Um, that is doing new mechanisms to lend capital based on the European Investment Bank to small companies that have wildlife watching activities or other activities in, um, associated with the wildlife conservation. Small um, mechanisms like this may make biodiversity also a source of, of income for local communities. And, um, and if you go to many of these communities in some of these landscapes, they have been really depressed economically because many, uh, they have been kind of left, uh, uh, they have been left behind with uh, modern times. And if you see some of the, of the young people coming back to these communities, are precisely people that are working on this kind of biodiversity businesses, such as wildlife watching. So this is what I have for you today, and you know, um, thank God for environmental scientists. <laughs>